here again, uh, MSC, MSNBC are uh, doing their bias uh, reporting on uh, on blacklisting when it comes to the recent stuff with uh, them being blacklisted by some publications, and I thought I might comment on on their uh, on their take on it and uh, interviewing uh, Stephen Totello. So let's uh, let's just read, dive right, right into it. Welcome back to Code Forward. The holidays are a great time to talk about the gaming industry, but this season it's not just about the big titles like Rock Band 4 and Call of Duty making headlines. Another type of gaming story has been drawing attention as well. Last week, the editor-in-chief of a gaming news and review site, Kotaku, publicly admitted that the site had been blacklisted by two major game publishers. Yeah, just to just to say something right here. Kutaku has um, blacklisted Play Asia and Penny Arcade. So they are not really uh, talking from a high horse here just to start with. So keep that in mind. Bethesda and Ubisoft. That means Kotaku's access to creators, developers, and early review copies of games were blocked by those companies. And that is not a right uh, that you that you have as uh, as journalists. You are given uh, this access if you don't fuck around with your uh, source. So yeah, continue. let's continue. The gaming community is fiercely divided over this. Some say Kotaku deserved to be blacklisted for breaking scoops about those companies. Others are defending the company, saying that keeping a media outlet from information because you just don't like their coverage is unethical. We no, it's not really unethical. The people who are saying this is Kotaku, Gawker, and people with an SGW mind. Because just look at the on the Deep Freeze page. Uh, and you can see that uh, Kotaku is not doing well at all there. Uh, they are uh, amongst the worst. And uh, they they really don't deserve uh, uh, to, to get uh, this access after being so unethical. Many statements. But joining me to talk about the blacklisting as well as the complicated relationship between game reviewers and game publishers is the author of the article, Kotaku Steven Totillo. Thank you, Steven, for coming. Thanks for having me, Natalie. So when I read this, I thought, oh my gosh, so punk rock. You're actually just calling them out for what's happening to you. Were you apprehensive? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Sorry about that. Calling them uh, that much out that uh, uh, you called your. Uh, own, uh, you called your own uh, uh, readers and consumers for dead, and you've been shitting all over gamers for uh, several years now. So Kotaku has nothing, and uh, they have no lag to stand on whatsoever. This is not punk rock. They are uh, uh, leaking shit and uh, being unethical, unethical as fuck. About saying this. Uh, I've been apprehensive about talking about this publicly for some time, not because I was worried about how the companies would react, but because I was mindful of how readers might react. Really? It's not like you came out and uh, apologized uh, when Nathan Grayson wrote about Zoe Quinn, now did you? And you still don't have an ethic ethical policy and you still uh, do continuously uh, do unethical work on your page. And you have a master's degree, Totello. I think that it's any company's right to say, hey, we don't want to talk to you anymore. And if they don't want to, we can work around that as we have for years. Right. But I was worried that readers might think, oh, then the reason they're being negative next time about this company's game is because they're taking revenge. Or well, bullshit, because... You, you're, you're doing it for attention. The reason they're being positive is because they're trying to curry favor and sort of make amends. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure that that we had demonstrated over months and really over years that we had been fair and even-handed to these companies and when writing about their games so that there really wouldn't be any 
doubt in readers' minds. And I think. Well, uh, if that were true, ye readers wouldn't uh, have any issue with you. Which, that's not true now, is it? You are a part of Games Journal's pros, and you've, you've been consistently shitty towards gamers. The thing I liked the best of the reaction was the people who said, we didn't even notice you were blacklisted because you just kept covering these companies' games as if everything was normal. And that's what you're supposed to fucking do. There are smaller sites that have to buy games that don't get early review copies to review games and do it because they, uh, they love doing what they do and get paid very, very uh, little, if at all. And uh, they do a better job at it than you do. Right, I'm curious about that, because how would they otherwise know if you hadn't said? Well, if we were a vindictive outlet, I guess we wouldn't have covered them, and we would have said, well, if you're not going to talk to us, we're not going to show your games, but I think that would be you know, anti-journalistic. Right. I guess that would have been an option. But it, it, human nature is that if, if somebody is making your life a little bit more inconvenient, or if they're making your job a little more difficult for you, you... Mm -hmm. You might that frustration might seep in in some way, and it's been a challenge at times when we have legitimate questions to ask for a you know journalistic story and they don't respond. That kind of thing can be frustrating, but I think we've done a good job of not letting that seep in. And after a while, readers began to notice, hey, their Fallout review didn't run when everybody else's did. Why yeah. is that? And when you have readers asking questions, so you as a good editor or a good reporter or writer, you should answer the questions. Right. And so I felt like we needed to. Ex but you're not a good editor or uh, or respond very well to any sort of criticism so explain to readers what was going on and that was the that was the thrust behind it it wasn't really to poke at these companies as you've learned yourself they don't really respond in like talking about this topic yeah. so i didn't think that they were really going to change their tune but you said that you had tried to mend these fences oh, yes. what what have you done to do that that has so, failed so in the early going of both, and to be clear for those who don't know, um, we, uh, we aggressively report on video game companies and we try to tell a lot of stories that I think are important about... You mean you write, uh, you make shit up, you, you don't give a shit if, uh, if the story is true, you uh, run, w run with shit uh, uh, just to get clicks. I mean, you, Patricia Hernandez about uh, women, uh, how m much sex they had in a bunch, and melon butts, and and all this stupid shit that's on your site. Even lifting shit from uh, 4chan and uh, making it seem as uh, it's your own. Not even crediting. So, there is no standard on your site, Steven, Mr. Steven Totillo. Whether it's uh, layoffs in the video game industry, censorship of people on YouTube, uh, copyright issues that are going on, uh, that there are important things. We also do fun things. I have a guy who reviews snack foods for us. We sort of run the gamut. And we have aggressively reported about both of these companies in terms of figuring out what's going on with their video games. And with both companies, they stopped you know, returning phone calls, emails, after we had published information revealing the existence of games they had not yet announced publicly. Mm -hmm. and the game yeah, because you're damaging their product. If uh, if uh, you're a movie, uh, making a movie, and you're uh, basically le leaking, uh, let's say uh, uh, Star Wars, which is has pre pretty t t uh, tight when it comes to to the story and uh, and not revealing and spoiling anything. How about uh, if uh, if Kutako just spoiled the whole fucking movie uh, after uh, Disney uh, and um, uh, the LucasArts spending millions of uh, dollars with NDAs and uh, 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 and making sure that people don't ruin the fucking movie so that people can have fun looking forward because. You know, uh, once it's out there, it's all over the social media. It's just spoils the fun for everyone, and this is what they're doing when it comes to games. They're they they're just ruining it for uh, for gamers. Instead of just waiting until the information is ready, you can make a informed decision, even when uh, uh, when the game is revealed or when the game is out. No, uh, not to, to get a scoop because you want clicks. This is bullshit.
know about games very often until a few months before they come out, the six months before they of come course, out. Of course, right. And I think that's kind of strange. Uh, it's as if you wouldn't have heard about the new Star Wars movie until a few months ago instead yeah. of the fact that we heard about it a couple of years ago. But that's how the gaming industry is. And so they've. As I said, the difference is you like to spoil what's in the game itself, not, not talk. Uh, uh, and also uh, reveal something that's in the works that might damage the production of it. Uh, say someone, uh, t uh, say, uh, again, look at uh, something like Deadpool. If that had been uh, wrongfully ha handled and the media had uh, uh, gotten wind of it in, in a different fashion, we might have not get gotten the, this movie which so many have been asking for, and Ryan Riles has spent like seven years trying to make. This is the exact same uh, instance of something like this. Saying them, but to me, if you get true information and you're a reporter, the thing you do is you tell your readers. There should be very few reasons not to tell your readers that you know something that they would right. be interested in. When this was going on, when I began to notice that they weren't responding to normal reporting inquiries, I reached out, I talked to the representatives of both companies. Those conversations were, were private slash off the record, so I can't go into mm -hmm. them. But I, I wouldn't be saying what I've, been, what I've been saying now if there was some radically different reason for you know, why I think that this all went down. Um, and some have said, as you said in your intro, that the companies are within their rights to not talk to us. And I think that's, that's arguable, I th but I firmly believe that... No, it's not arguable. They have the right. Shut the fuck up. What we did is the good journalism and the right journalism of telling our readers about true things that we found out about. And, right. So you address you know. the ethics. I want to read what you wrote um, about leaking information. Ethics coming from Kotaku. That's that's pretty. Okay. Ahead of time, you say that we told the truth about their games, sometimes in ways that disrupted a marketing plan, other times in ways that shone an unflattering light on their products and company practices. Both publishers' actions demonstrate contempt for us and, by extension, the whole of the gaming press. So No, they're not doing against the whole gaming press. They're doing it towards you. There's a big difference. Can you react to that? <laughs> Well, that's some good writing on my part. It, it it? Is. <laughs> uh, uh, no. Yeah, you're not shy about what you think of your own uh, fucking work now, are you, Stephen Totello? I. The point I was trying to make there, and the point that really collectively we're trying to make as Kotaku, as 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 a, uh, our outlet, is that. We believe that our job is to tell gamers, people who love video games, the truth about video games. And to some people that's like, well, it's, you're not covering politics, you're not covering state secrets, why take it so seriously? But for me, it's just, as I said in the piece, it's unfathomable that we would receive a tip that's accurate about an exciting new video game that our readers would want to know about and that we wouldn't tell our readers for six months or a year just because the company didn't want us to, just because the PR and marketing people didn't want us to. We weren't bound by any right. uh, NDAs or anything like that, and I think it's just it's standard reporting. It's what you do. And, and No, it's not. Why should your journalistic standards be different than, say, the New York Times? Because you mentioned politics. The White House just can't say, well, the New York Times can't come to press conferences anymore because we don't like the way they cover us or they, we don't like that they break. Because uh, the White House is official and... Uh, Ubisoft and Bethesda are both private. They can do whatever the fuck they want. Stories, right? Right. This is how journalism works. Yes, and the, I think one of the questions for a lot of people that they've been grappling with in reaction to this is do they think of entertainment journalism as different from other types of journalism? Mm -hmm. And to what extent is and should entertainment journalism be dependent on access. You know, you rely on the movie studio to let you into the screening, you rely on the book publisher to send you a galley a copy of the book so that you can review these things on time or access to the actors so you can interview them. And studios and book publishers aren't obligated to have to do that with every outlet out there. But I would think that if you maintain a certain level of credibility, you show a certain level of professionalism and in your interest in the creative work. See, that, that's... Uh... That's the problem now, isn't it? There isn't any professionalism among you guys. Just saying. Perhaps that might be the main reason. To engage with you, these companies have decided otherwise. It hasn't really hurt us in the sense that 
our stories about these games have been very successful. Hundreds of thousands of people read our reviews of their games. Uh, but I felt, like I said, our readers needed to know um, why our reviews weren't running at the same time as other people's reviews. And they needed to also understand that you know, we, we can live with this and it isn't going to change the way that we do our reporting. We're not going to be cowed out of telling people something that we think is interesting and worth them knowing just because we're worried that it's going to right. anger some company. But these launches are very carefully composed. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we have a little empathy for the people who orchestrate them, sure. and you see that you're trying to compose like a really grand launch and then someone leaks something, like can you see it from their side? How yeah, because that's the issue. You're screwing up a PR campaign, whether we like it as consumers or not. That they're screwing up for millions of dollars, and again, they're not doing it for the consumers. Uh, they're doing it for themselves to get money, to get clicks, to get to to get uh, be infamous. Oh, like that's that would very be angry. hurtful and it, yeah yes yeah, so, sorry I, I, yeah I would be I would be angry I, I would be uh, frustrated I've heard from game developers who have said Stephen don't you understand that this is demoralizing if you guys show our work before we were ready to show our work how would you like it if we published the rough draft of an article that you've mm -hmm. written and I get that exactly so why the fuck are you doing this but I say that a reporter's job is to report true things, is to tell... Yeah, and this is where you are full of shit. Because if, uh, th if this was true again, you would not be... Th the Kutaku would not be in the state it is right now with Gawker, and the trust would not be as cancerous with the audience as it is. We didn't leak anything. We didn't go and invade these companies to, you know, and steal, rummage through their dustbins to find things. Yeah, let's let's blame everyone else. Well, we didn't do anything. We just published it. Occasionally, people tip us information. Sometimes it's about how the studio they work for isn't paying them. Sometimes, but sometimes it's, hey, guess what game they're working on now? Yeah, it's not like Gawker isn't paying their interns. Oops. And if I'm looking at a seven-minute video of an unannounced video game from one of the most successful franchises in gaming right and i'm looking at that my thinking is is this accurate is this true is this something interesting for my readers to see then it's my job as right. a journalist to show them it's not the noblest scoop of all time but it's something i i find it ennoble the idea that i would sit on that for six months because well, really, just because the company wanted me to. But I just don't these think are you two do different that. questions, right? How it does work is how you're playing the game, and how it should work is a completely different question. Mm -hmm. We saw that question asked a lot with the Gizmodo leak of the iPhone that was found in the bar, right? right? And so many people said you should have just done nothing with it. But that's not how tech journalism works. That's not how. That's just not how it works. So, where do you come down on how it should work? versus how you're actually playing the game, how we play it in, the, in this industry. Well, I, don't, I, I think it should work the way that, uh, it should work like proper journalism. It should work where you don't worry too much about what's gonna happen with your access. Some have interpreted what I wrote as whining, as complaining, as trying to get these companies to change their ways. They think that our calculation in this piece was that if only we make this public, we'll shame them out of doing it. And it's true. Yeah, that's your plan, Kotaku. You're in it for the money and for the for the clicks and to get attention. That that's happened in the past. In fact, it happened with Kotaku several years ago, uh, where a company explicitly emailed uh, the then editor in chief Brian Crescente and said that they were going to uh, disinvite Kotaku from all events. He published that email and it, it shamed them out of doing it. But for me, it's. It's a matter of you, you, you go day to day and you make the decisions on a day to day basis. And if you find yourself with access to something that's interesting and true, you decide, A, is this relevant to my readership? Is it newsworthy? Um, you certainly think through the consequences, but those consequences ultimately should be, am I, telling my, am I honoring the expectation of my readers or not for yeah. them to know what I know? And that's what you decide. And if that means that a company will take vengeance on you, really, so be it. You know, we can still get the work done. Right. Again, you're pushing all of the responsibility, saying you're you're um, hiding behind the mask of uh, of truth and justice and uh, doing the right thing when it's not true at all.
This is bullshit. All right, but there is still a fear of retribution because I asked other games reviewers mm -hmm. about this story and they were nervous to talk to me about okay. it because they're afraid too. Yeah, I mean, the, a lot of the blacklisting that's happened in the past with games media has involved reviews, so a little bit different than this. And that's why I think the, the reaction has been more mixed in terms of people trying to work through their feelings. I've gotten complete, I think I've gotten about 95. Why not ask why they have been banned by uh, getting review copies? Like, even if you hate Final Fantasy XIII, and you hate it with a uh, with a passion. Uh, I thought it was an all right game. I had some issues. It was a little bit, little bit of a mess, but uh, I don't really hate the game. But Jim Sterling claimed to have played the game and uh, did not even finish uh, f finish the game or the, uh, finish the first chapters. And reviewed the game and uh, gave it a score. That's why uh, Square Enix has uh, blacklisted him. Perhaps you should have mentioned that. Sent support from all the journalists I've heard from, both inside and outside of gaming. All reporters who have come to me directly have said, "This you're spot on. Like this is what a reporter does, and you can't worry too much about who's going to get angry with you. You do the journalism." Yeah, I call BS. Now, those are either from Kotaku or from Poly Polygon. I would say that gamers have had more of a, a sort of had to work through this because for some of them they are certainly sensitive to hurting the feelings of the developers whose game has been seen early. I, I would point out that some of the stories that I believe contributed to the blacklist don't involve simple leaks. Um, the company Bethesda, one of the two, we'd reported on them very aggressively for a year and while they've never explicitly said and certainly not publicly said exactly which stories are the ones that angered them, I, I'm disinclined to believe it was simply the, the Fallout 4 information that we published. We had published uh, earlier stories in 2013 uh, preceding this cutoff involving things like uh, catching their executives, making some misleading statements about the status of the game that they were working on. Um, yeah, you you don't see that. That's an issue right there. Okay. On. They still talk to us after that, but I think that kind of raised the temperature some. Uh, but I was saying reviews have also been a point of contention, not for us, yeah. uh, but some publishers are very petty. You right. slam their game, they don't want to talk to you, they pull advertising. Famously, a guy named Jeff Gerstmann was fired from GameSpot, uh -huh. presumably because of a, yeah. a negative review he wrote that angered a, a publisher. So that Yeah, fuck GameSpot. Does happen. Right, okay. Well, I appreciate your insight on this very much. Thank you so much for coming to talk. Yeah, I would just like to, I'm going to link this in uh, in the description, uh, just to, to read out a few comments, which are interesting. Um, uh, given Kotaku immediately blacklists to play Asia and Panic Arcade, Kotaku doesn't have a leg to, a leg to stand on. Kotaku hates gamers and feel, the feeling is mutual. There is no reason for Bethesda or Ubisoft to talk to them, because gamers don't read them. A fake uh, a gaming site gets blacklisted. Steven Tortilla <laughs> cries about on national TV. Good. Kotaku deserves to be blacklisted. All they do is hurt the gaming industry. They're not real, uh, a real news organization to begin with. Yeah, that's true. They call themselves bloggers. That's right. Um, they're just a collective uh, of aggran uh, aggrandized uh, bloggers with irrelevant opinions. If every company blacklisted them, nothing of value would be lost at all. One might call it uh, an unspeakable gain for them to drift into obscurity. Uh, considering the tribe, they tend to regurgitate onto the internet. Breaking scoops, what the f, punk rock, what the f, does she think punk rock is, even hand and fair, what the f is blacklisting, um, yeah. You can, uh, you can go and uh, read the comments uh, and themselves, or watch the video in its entire uh, uh, glory. Uh, and as always, uh, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.